everyone, Raji Narayan Singh here, transgender activist, author, and actress. And you know, you probably recognize me from the reality show Botched on the E! Network. <laughs> hey, I wouldn't be Raji if I didn't say that. So I'm coming to you from my very humble home here in Hollywood, Florida, USA. And this week was a pretty busy week for me. I had two speaking engagements. Wednesday night, I spoke at my spiritual center, which was a great honor, the Center for Spiritual Living. Uh, science of Mind, Dr. Ernest Holmes. Um, so that, I've been going there for like 12 years now. So when they asked me to speak, I mean, that was just like such a great honor. Thursday, I spoke at a homeless shelter called the Lotus House. Now, <laughs> when I tell you about this homeless shelter, oh my God. Well, first of all, I met one of the directors at the Lotus House at another event that I spoke at in January. And um, after I spoke, she came up to me after the program was over and she introduced herself and she said, you know, I would love for you to come to Lotus House to speak. And, you know, more, I think it was for, well, for me to share my story, but I think to like kind of have more transgender sensitivity amongst the, the population there. I'll just put it like that. The Lotus House, the administration welcomes LGBTQ people, but it's a whole nother story when you're dealing with the population, the people that are at the shelter. So um, long story short, I was asked to come this past Thursday to speak. So I walk in. Now, I couldn't believe it because I was expecting like typical homeless shelter. I've been to a few before helping, volunteering and, and that sort of thing. But this, honey, was when I tell you state of the art, it was like an apartment building or a college dormitory. I couldn't believe it. She told me, Marie's the um, director, that was my contact person. Uh, so I was asking all these questions and she told me, it's a two-year-old building, $25 million complex, okay? When you walked in, there was a lobby area, but then it was like you were like in a shopping mall. They had a beauty salon. They had a medical center, a big, humongous cafeteria, um, and a yoga studio. I mean, really nice. And, um, and let me tell you, the cafeteria, they don't only just offer regular meals. They do vegetarian and vegan options <laughs> and they also uh, have um tai chi and other different things that they offer i mean it's just it was unbelievable so each floor is kind of set up like this i think i went to the second or third floor that's where i was speaking but the elevators open up into another like smaller lobby area and there's a laundry room they have a conference room with like all it's like glass so you have like all this like sunlight coming in comfortable chairs and tables and then there's two wings. You go one way, there's a set of rooms. You go another way, there's a set of rooms. Marie was telling me, I think the max is like 500 guests. They don't call them clients there. They are guests. <laughs> and um, usually they're pretty um, filled to capacity. So they have, uh, the floor that I was on was the singles floor. Homeless people that are single, um, and they share a room. There's two people that share a room. The room you walk in, there's a little like living area, a kitchen area, a hallway. And on one side is one person, on the other side is the other. And they have curtains that they can pull for privacy. And then they have a bathroom uh, that locks. So I really, like I said, dormitory style, you know. And um, the people aren't made to like have to go out in the day you know, by a certain time, leave the shelter and be out all day and then come back in the evening. No, they have programs for these people. It's a case by case thing. She said some of the people that come in there, they have drug uh, problems. So they have to go for that sort of thing, like the different drugs programs that they offer. Some of the people have mental health issues. They have uh, those services. And it is case by case. She told me that six months is the standard time that uh, a guest can stay. But it's case by case. Some people stay longer. I met a lady, she was there already a whole year. 
So it is definitely case by case. Now they have the floor that I, I was on was a singles floor, but they have a two youth floors for homeless youth, and then they have two floors for homeless families, like a mother with children type situation. And Marie was saying that they really hold people by the hands, you know, like walk them through. And the impression that I got, like this, I, I got a sense of like the Lotus House wanting to take people when they're at like a very low point, probably their lowest point in their life journey and lift them up, help them really get out of the situation. Marie told me that they help people find work, uh, the ones that can work, the ones that they um, that need uh, disability, they help them to apply for disability. Uh, again, like the different programs, the drug programs, uh, the mental health programs, you have to uh, attend group. They have groups that they have weekly. Uh, so you have to attend your group. There's certainly certain things that are required of the guest. Um, you have to meet with your social worker once a week, I think. Maybe more, but I think she said once a week. Uh, so there's certain things required. But when I tell you all walks of life, honey, oh my God. The people that attended my group, it was about 30, I think it was about 30 people that attended. And a flyer was put out and whoever wanted to attend could come. So it was about 30 people that came to hear me speak. And um, it was a mixture, black, white, Spanish. There was a Jamaican Chinese woman there, um, a woman uh, in a wheelchair, so disabled. Um, they had two gender non-conforming people there, um, young, old, uh, just all sorts of people that came. This one lady, and you know, the stories were just phenomenal. I mean, you could tell, like a lot of these people had dynamic lives and something along the way happened. You know how they say life happens and they ended up in this situation. Uh, the Jamaican Chinese woman her, she was telling me that her brother, she has a gay brother, and she was, like, sharing, you know, like, how, uh, about him and how the family, a lot of her family has accepted him. Um, there was a, a African-American woman there. Her daughter is 13 years old. She just came out to her saying that she likes girls. Uh, she's attracted to girls. Uh, the woman in the wheelchair I, and I was like, she looks like she could be Indian or like mixed. And sure enough, her mom is uh, or was Malaysian. Her father was uh, British. She grew up in England. Oh, sorry, she was born in England, grew up in Germany, lived in Barbados, um, Trinidad, Antigua. The, uh, I think the, was it the Bahamas? There was another island and then came to the States she had five daughters. She's a grandmother. I mean, just dynamic lives and, and shit happens, you know? Two other girls, uh, that one was from um, England. She had a, a British accent. Young, relatively young girl. Uh, pretty, beautiful. And she had a son, she said. Uh, ended up in there. This other girl, um, biracial girl from L.A., she was telling me she has a son. I think he's like 20, um, but she's dated like some celebrities. I think she said like three or four celebrities when she was out in L.A. Dynamic life, you know, but shit happens and she's in a homeless shelter here in Miami. Um, she's dealing with some, I think, heart failure now. To look at her, you would never know. But she was saying that she's on the transplant list. So, again, people from all walks of life. But I was pretty well received. I mean, I shared my story. And, you know, it was amazing. The days of autographs, I thought, were over. Most people want a selfie, you know, a picture with you. But these people, after my talk, because, you know, I always bring my, my flyers. <laughs> after my talk. Um, they stood in line for me to sign an autograph for them. Like, 
well, I gave personal messages. I just can't write the same thing over and over again. So depending on the person, I wrote my own personal message to them. But it was like, I would say out of the 30 people, like 20-something people wanted me to sign an autograph on, the, on my flyer, you know, sign it to them. I thought that was just so sweet. A few of them stayed afterwards because they wanted to talk to me one-on-one. -on -one. Um, but I just really felt... <sighs> Everywhere I go and share my story, I know that I'm touching people. But I think talking at this shelter to people that are like really, really at a low point in their life, um, being homeless, uh, I just felt like I was really helping to encourage and inspire them. And uh, a few of them, they hugged me and they told me that I really did inspire them. And um, so it, just, I, it was a really good feeling. So, I wouldn't have known that I was in a homeless shelter, honey. <laughs> I would have thought I was in an apartment building, like I said, or a dormitory. I wouldn't have known if it wasn't for, and I'm going to say it like this, them ghetto-ass folk, that's how I'm going to say it, that were walking through those hallways, honey. I was like, oh my God, you know, the people that attended for the most part were open and, you know, receptive and you could tell they, they, they have like that thing in them that wants to like, you know, get out of the situation and, and, and move forward and do some great things. But honey, some of those people, some of those guests, <laughs> as I walked through the hallways, you could just tell. And this is when I knew that someone being transgender even though the lotus house welcomes you in yeah of course there's a wait list you got to go on a wait list and i heard the list is pretty long but if you get in you're on the list and you're trans they will welcome you in it's the 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 clients the guests that might be a problem because i could tell when i was walking through some of the Ghetto ass folk. <laughs> I want to say something else, but um, the way they were reacting to me and acting, yeah, because I wasn't acting like a park ape. Um, you know, when you when you when you're trying to carry yourself with some decency and sense and not acting like them, you know, on top of it, me being trans, um, you know, I could tell that a person like me might have some difficulty, you know, dealing with them people. Um, not all of them, but like I said, and if it wasn't for them, like I said, you wouldn't even know that um, you were in a homeless shelter. I swear. I you, Well, maybe you would a little bit, but, but what I'm saying is the place was like, oh my God, state of the art, okay? And, um, but I just was made to feel like Outside of the conference room, when I well, when I was going in, I felt kind of like, oh, you know. And um, then when I was maneuvering through the hallways and stuff, I could just feel it, you know. And and uh, people can act so fucking, so fucking ignorant. I swear. And honey, I was there being professional because I was an invited speaker. But they did not want me to get ghetto. Because I could have got right with their asses. I swear. But I held back. Because I'm a, an invited speaker. I'm going to try to carry myself professionally. But I did want to give some of them a piece of my mind. You know. And it's so funny. It's like. You know. They want to pounce on you. You know. Like the sheep. You're a sheep walking into the wolf's den. Honey. They don't want none of this. They do not want none of this, honey, because, oh, let me stop. Okay. Oh, my God. <laughs> Calm down, Raji. <laughs> You're not there anymore. But, no, you know what I'm talking about. That whole ghetto um, mentality and, you know, they see someone that's different and stands out and, and you know, not acting the fool like them. Um, and they want to just, you know, they want to pounce on you and, and, and laugh and make comments and stuff. I don't, you know what?
They can stay right there and they probably won't go anywhere. Um, but you know what? You don't have to be uh, like that. You know, we all have been through problems. I, I can tell you I've been through some stuff. And I, I wasn't mean and, you know, and acting the fool like that to other people. There's, that's no, there's no excuse to do that. You don't have to be like that. You can be in the mud, honey, and still be a lotus flower. Get it? Lotus flowers, they grow in swamps. But they're so beautiful. So you can be in the mud and still be a flower. <laughs> anyway... I think that the Lotus House is a good model for, like, other cities uh, when it comes to their homeless shelters. I mean, because the, the people are really lifted up. And they you could tell hy hygienically, you know, they were well kept and, and just really, really being taken care of and lifted up. And I just thought it was great. So it was such an honor. I may go back again to speak. Marie was happy with my talk. She said maybe next time we'll do a panel, um, which is great because, you know, I'm only one transgender story. There's so many others. And so, and all of our stories are so dynamic. So, um, yeah, that would be great. But uh, I just, um, I left feeling like I made a difference. I really inspired some people and, and encouraged some people except for them ghetto ass folk <laughs> and y'all know what i mean <laughs> anyway love peace and blessings Mwah!